we can get him in here. The big man. Look at that. Holy Ride shit. Back, baby. He's What's going on, guys? Can, can you hear us by chance? I can hear you. Yeah, hopefully you can hear me. Oh, we can hear you loud and clear. Hopefully this thing works. Sometimes we have some bad internet connection. We just got done filming a couple things. and uh, Sometimes we got some bad announcing, too, that we, <laughs> that we do. Jumped on 30 seconds beforehand, so we're... We're good to go. We we uh we wing this thing, man. We don't script a bunch of shit out. I know. I mean, we Rick, don't do anything. We, we don't do anything. <laughs> we, if we get a work, you just come on in. How's it going, man? Doing well. Just knocked out my show for the day, and I got to do some. I got to do shoulder rehab, wet cupping, and wet cupping, shoulder rehab, and training coming up, and more work. But it's it's morning tonight, man. It's uh, feeling great. So I'm very. Very, very grateful to be in the position I'm in right now and, and hopefully be able to do some cool things coming up. So Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking time out of your busy nope. schedule. Coming on with me and Rip Rogers today. Don't well, get no better well, than that. his stock's going to go up because all the hot women are going to see me and you. And they're going to want, <laughs> they're going to want right back instead. Of, it's, of I appreciate that. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, that's really all we have on here is a bunch of hot women. I mean, you got Rip Rogers on here. He's the hottest 69-year-old that – it's sitting in his chair yeah, right now. I, I, yeah, seen. I tell you, Rip, I have a lot of respect, man, for you and all the things that you've done and, and the work ethic you have. And I've seen and heard the stories. And I know you're a cardio machine, and, and we're in your day, and you're still going strong. And it's uh, it's inspirational, man. I hope I'm I hope I'm still going and going strong at your age as well. So thank you. Shit, the way you're doing, you'll be twenty pounds bigger, twenty pounds more more ripped. Your fernum will be even bigger. You won't need any blue <laughs> pills or anything. <laughs> It don't get any better than that. Then better be it. It don't get any better than being being right back, baby. No way. Man. Oh no, I appreciate the kind words. It's uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and you guys, I know you've you've reached out in the past. I just wanted to get that trademark stuff out of the way and won that finally. And and now we can got my site set on hopefully getting cleared this summer. And 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 I've issued a challenge to Goldberg, and and I and I really 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 want to. You know, the timing is very important in all of this, and. I'm uh, starting the old Feed Me More media tour, so now we can rock and roll and, and no more issues. Yeah, we're gonna put that Goldberg. We're gonna we're gonna promote that. We're gonna pump that thing up. We're gonna get that going. I I, I tried to listen to you a little bit on uh, Stevie Ray just to kind of catch up with things. I didn't get Thank through you. nearly enough, but I know you had mentioned uh, maybe AEW, and then he mentioned like promoting it, you know, yeah. like a solo thing or whatever. But I'll tell you what. Me and Rip have got inside connection with Tony Khan, so if anybody can make that happen at AEW, I'm sure it's right here at the Rip Rogers yeah, show. Yeah, anybody that talks about me, they're all banned from AEW. <laughs> 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 Just because I said he was, well, you know. Little negatory stuff. Well, he has no business promoting. Get real. He might as well just burn his money or give it to me, and I can waste it on broads or young boys or whatever. What the hell, right? Yeah. It's, uh, at, at least at least 18, yeah. I mean, you know I, what? I, I, I've said this, though, and I'll go on the record of saying this is something I've thought about for a long time. I've been out for, for a good while, and I, I really think there's going to be a really cool uh, thing that we can show the world and everything. And for me personally, you know, I, I came up in, in from Deep South Wrestling with Bill DeMott, and then, you know, my time in OVW with Al Snow and Rip, you were down there with that. But I was literally shell-shocked kind of transitioning from that and coming into that environment and seeing – kind of a whole new world down there and all for, all for the better with that. But, you know, and go, getting rehired and going to Florida Championship Wrestling, you know, so Bill DeMott, Al Snow uh, with that, Dr. Tom Pritchard, Steve Kern, Norman Smiley. And, and one of the big regrets uh, that I've always had is I did not take advantage of the time that when you were down there running, doing the other classes and in that, that because everybody that's ever came from, from your training with that, I've had great respect for because they have very good psychology and a very good understanding of the business. I've not met one person that, that comes from you that, that I would go, oh, they have no idea what they're doing. And so I'm hoping that if all this comes together and I can get cleared in time and we can make this happen, I really, really want to do some sort of documentary on my, the whole, everything that's happened with me and, and all the trainers in my career, Bill, Al Snow, Dr. Tom, get everybody down together, rip, and, and literally document, and not just for, not just for the fucking fit video, but for real training to kind of improve all my weaknesses, everything that, that to get ready and get, cause I think it's a really, really once in a lifetime opportunity. And, and that's the one right I want to wrong that I never got to get that experience with you. That bothers me. So I'll put that on the record. Do I, do I owe you money or anything? 
No, no, no. I just, I have, I have great respect for you. You, everybody, I'm telling you, everybody that has come from you, you know, Kalen Croft, Chris, Chris Pavone is one of my good friends I talk to. Everybody just has a very thorough, good understanding. Dylan Bostic, I I requested to work him multiple times on when I was really injured because I needed to work somebody a little smaller than me to protect my back and shoulder and, and couldn't have asked for a better guy. And that just anybody that comes from you, it, they, there's never once, like I said, there's never been one issue. And, uh, and so I have great respect for you. It's awesome. It's oh. awesome, Rip. Don't get me crying here. I'll, right. I'll be like, I'll be like Shannon, <laughs> Shannon Sharp on when he was, when he was breaking up with, with Skip, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of that was great until he mentioned your son, the golden child, yeah. Dylan Boston. Yeah. Well, yeah, know. I could have done without that part, but you know. <laughs> Get, Dylan gets special treatment all the yeah, time. We, we we were just all together. We went to a show last weekend, and uh, I saw that. Yeah, I saw the picture. So. Me, Rip I love Dylan. seeing that man. Those are the moments, man. That's what life's all about. So, speaking of that, I remember when you came back down. So you were you were signed and everything, and then yeah. released, let go, what however it went down. Yeah. And I remember you showing up at DCW when we were doing the DCW yeah. outside of OVW. I remember mm-hmm. you coming to a couple of Rips classes and then started doing our DCW TV. I only met you a little bit beforehand um, when you were with OVW signed, yeah. saw you from a distance. I mean, I'm not going to lie, man. I was like, I get kind you, of perception. Maybe other people like you scared me. I was like, you man, in, this guy intimidated kinda, you. Yeah, and I kind of thought, man, I don't know, jerk possibly like, yeah, yeah, I, I no, I get it. approach it's, you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You came back down to DCW after you were released. You were as cool as shit. You you worked with everybody just like you'd never been like to WWE. You came to practice. You did all the TV. Well, I, 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 well, I also I also wrestled like I wasn't in WWE, so I had a little bit of work to do still. Yeah, yeah. So he had the Smoky Bones barbecue suit on. Yeah, that was yeah. the best. It, I'll, I'll tell you, Vaughn. I, I had one class with Rip. I, I I talked about this. I think I told Rip this before. This was where I knew I go. I, I had. I was out of the business and I got caught up living with a girl and raised her a kid in Louisville, smoking hot chick for a year and a half and wouldn't take any of it back, but learned some life lessons. But I developed a little bit of a drinking problem in that period. I mean, I'm talking a whole bottle of that big Burnett's vodka every night. And then I was drinking with ODB. I, that night before <laughs> I came to the hour, out of the class with Rip, I hadn't trained. I wanted to start getting back. I didn't realize how I always went to the gym every day, but my conditioning, I, my, from drinking, I was severely dehydrated from drinking probably for a year straight, a bottle of vodka every night. And, and I kid you not, I, we get into that class and we did, it was the hour chain wrestling. I don't know if I even made it 12, 15 minutes in my body, not, not from being tired. I went, I started cramping yeah. severely and from being a, an alcoholic essentially. And I was so fucking embarrassed. I just go, Jesus Christ, like what? And that was one of those life moments. So I go, I, I quit drinking. For that and I got I ended up getting rehired eventually but I, that was a, a very embarrassing key moment in my life for me and it, it just it didn't didn't intend for it to be that but but it, it's something that literally re- it sticks in my brain and I always remembered after that I go conditioning is so important you can't be doing things that hurt you to do this because uh, it was embarrassing I, there was nothing I could do and I sat down and watched the rest I go what a fucking joke I am right now so well, thank you really it was nothing to be embarrassed about when you come in, like if you come into my class, if if for normal people that have been there for a long time, that's just breakfast at Tiff. This you do this every day. Yeah. It's the way of life. Yeah. Have I already been to the gym three hours today? Hell yes. Did I work all night the night before? Hell yes. If I don't get my rush, my my endorphins going, I'm mad and I hate the world. I hate the world anyway, so I don't want to hate it as much. But the normal person just changed for 10 minutes and all of a sudden they got to go to the puke bucket. Yeah. And you were a bigger guy yeah. and you were, no matter what, you're coming in a strange environment. So you're nervous. You could, ha- you could be in perfect, you could be in good shape, but now yeah. because you're nervous, you blow up in seven minutes. So yeah. that, that was the norm. Yeah. So it wasn't no big be- deal. I'd say everybody, so any time somebody come in, I could get the puke bucket where it ready. It's going to happen yeah. because they're but going you, to be nervous. They're in front of different yeah. people. They don't want to look bad. They're going, and that's just the way it is. Conditioning is mean, so important, though, in wrestling. And I learned that over. I always was in conditioning, but I'm talking blow up conditioning. And like, the, you know, you, I always heard stories too of, of of 
of, of Steamboat and Flair, and they would do the Stairmaster and how, and I go, I, I bought one. I've got the same one. I've got, I literally set myself up for success, but I learned that that was, I tell people this, the biggest reason I used to get in deep South, build them out, used to blow me up and I used to take too much caffeine. I didn't know the things I was doing was hurting me and I didn't understand why my conditioning wasn't what it used to be, but I was making bad decisions from a nutrition standpoint and over consuming things, stimulants and things that were making even more difficult and being bigger to begin with. But I, I realized, I go, how the number one thing that all these wrestlers that have usually the most success is they have fantastic conditioning more often than not. And the one thing that was holding me back at that time, I was so scared of blowing up in conditioning. And so I had to make changes and I really contribute. And you're tied into all this. And I really, and that what I was telling you really hammered it home to me is like, I go, I have to get my condition out of the equation in order to do this. And all my success and the opportunities I had was because of what I put into conditioning. And the things that you implement into talent teach that by doing it and you get no better conditioning than doing it. And that's why I just, it, it, it really is it's what but it makes you or breaks you in this game or one of the big things as well as your attitude. So. Yeah, that that hour chain, man. There's nothing like it. That was that was great. You didn't have to do all the squats and all the whatever else people tried to put you through at, at other places. Yeah, you just did an hour chain. That was your cardio, and you you fine tuned your wrestling skills as well. So absolutely. Sometimes you hated going through it at the time, but when it was all over and done, it's like any other workout. You're like, oh god, I feel yeah. so much better now. I'm glad I glad I went through that. It's like and football you can work. Practice. Like football practice is over, man. What a practice. I'm glad I'm glad it's over. Now I can yeah. shoot, shower, and shave, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do it again tomorrow. But that's what you go out there, and I tell you, in, in my time in WWE, and we, with TV and, and pay-per-view, you have to have a lot of things that are planned for cameras, and they, they want to know as well. But live events is where we, I, I really, really, everything I learned in developmental in the different places, going out there and working with guys. And, yeah, we'd have the go-home in the sequence, but doing a lot of the match on the fly is the most fun I've ever had, but that kind of stuff is where you can go out there. You don't have to worry because you have a, you have a Rolodex of stuff you can go to and you know how to mix and match with different guys. And, and so it pays off. If you're like really trying to do this, that stuff pays off though at a later date and allows you to make more money, have more fun, stay healthier. You're not worrying about messing up because you know what you're doing out there. And, it, and man, there's, it's the best thing in the world. And that's why I just, just, Huge respect because you you implement you teach people how to be successful whether they like it or not. Man, well, you know, like I said, <laughs> I, I must owe, I must owe him money or whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and people think you're a jerk, man. I mean, come on. Uh, it's I've dealt with a lot of hate over the things, and I like I I know the truth though. And but I I've really I think I've matured in the sense of I had to get healthy. But I go you, when you block stuff and just ignore it you leave people to, to form their own opinions on things. like, And I go, I'm just going to tackle everything head on and talk with people. And, and you want to talk with, you can't talk with everybody, obviously. I go, but I go, I, it sucks to be gone. And a lot of this stuff has been created when I was gone. It wasn't the, the issue when I was there. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not happy with the way everything ended and had everything cut short. And, but I, I'm really, I go, you know what? Communication is key. And I'm not perfect. I don't know shit. But communication is, is key on this and i go i'm just going to tackle this head on and you know it i think it's all going to work out just fine man there's so many places i want to go right now i do want to go backwards in in just a minute okay. but are you a baby face or a heel right now because i you know there for a while on twitter you were like loved everybody and positivity and then here lately you're like fuck you and that kind of stuff to people i like what are you right now well, I'm not with any, any company organization, so I think I, I get to be an independent contractor, and one day I'm a baby face, and the next day I'm a heel. And it, I, one hour I'm a baby face, the next hour I can play a heel. I think that's the one thing, and this is why I think it's important. Twitter, I think a lot of – I'm very sarcastic, and I, I love to laugh and joke, and that's helped me heal in, in, with all my injuries in laughing, which is why I do the entertainment. I love entertaining. I love being creative. But I just I go, I think it's important to maybe talk to some people here so they can understand that with everything going on, that my sense of humor and personality, because Twitter, you can really, I do something laughing, not thinking two, uh, two thoughts about it, but it can come off maybe pretty harsh at different times with that. And I, I'm, I just think it's the funniest thing in the world. But so I go, I got to talk to a few people, maybe let them, because Twitter, things can get lost in text all day long. So. Yeah, I just had to ask, man. Had yeah. to ask. Hey, I feel like I'm babyface for this show, though. This is a babyface show. Oh, yeah, we're all babyface here, right, Rip? 
We're oh all yeah, good. I'm, We're all I'm, good I'm a good, I'm a good, yeah, I'm the We're greatest, guys, greatest yeah. guy ever. We don't, we, don't, we don't dig up dirt. We we don't try to say anything mean. We're just kumbaya, baby. All love on this show. We're just over here ripping farts, you know, <laughs> sniffing each other. He's got his hand on, on my knee right now. He likes uh, a man with experience. I can't yeah, blame nothing, him. Nothing wrong with that. I can't. I can't blame him. You know. Yeah, I apologize if I had anything to do with your heavy drinking when you came back because I feel like no, no, no. I feel like me and you went out a couple few times. Oh yeah, we we did. Yeah, yeah I. God, yeah, that, I was I was drinking hard, man. I was. It was yeah. <laughs> yeah he's drinking so hard he doesn't remember. We were, <laughs> Yeah. I, it was like me, you, I think. I can't remember if Roadkill was driving us at the time. Somebody was always driving us. Twinkle Toes was there. <laughs> I remember uh, we had a group of us, though. A little group, we go down to 4th Street or whatever. You, you yeah. Were, you definitely came out. That's when you were doing, like, um, uh, the, the girl you had mentioned. You had, I think, maybe just ended it with her, possibly, at that time. You probably did, and Then yeah. you, you made the big comeback. You're reading the book, The Secret, I remember, and you came that was in. One of, yeah, it ended. That was right after it ended. She actually played a big part of – I was at Smoky Bones, and she called me, and we I, I, I broke up with her. We got – then we got back together, and then she broke up with me, and then that really fucked me up. And then uh, – and, and, uh, and then oh, we had a phone call, and she told me, she goes, you're a fucking loser. You're never going to get rehired by WWE and and that literally lit a fire under my ass that I needed desperately at that time and I just go fuck this and, and but sorry to cut you off but that was what that had just happened the secret and it was like yeah we got let here we go yeah I remember going to like a six flag show and, and we had rings set up or whatever we we're all just kind of hanging out that's when it I just remember sitting there talking to you for quite a while and I was like man I was like never wanted to talk to this guy when I first met him and then you were just like any other dude really and cool and shit it's, like just that's you. just where you're like the perception of people you know can be and i'm sure that it's your perception right now with some people you see it on yeah. twitter you see it all over the place yeah. but and you really get to know somebody out. it's totally a different yeah. story and i think but too the wrestling environment and the, the how the locker rooms can be it's a competitive environment or that and yeah. the, it, you're everybody's fighting for a job to do what they want and to make money and to be able to live the life that they want and and he could bring out the the worst in people too. That not, not, not necessarily, but I, that part of that too is me. I, I think I keep to myself a lot, and I don't. I don't. That's where I've kind of learned. And I, I, I think maybe don't be afraid to commu communicate. And I can control that as well. You know, I don't think I, I. I the same thing. I don't think I ever came over and and made myself. You know, my personality or tried to to a warm hello or you know. So it's. It goes both ways. I mean, I mean, people at OVW, a lot of them thought I was an asshole. I only talked to a handful of people. I was the same way. I only talked to a few people here and there, and that was about it. Hey, do you remember anything about the day, the tryout camp, when you got re-signed? Do you yeah. remember anything about anybody else getting re-signed? We've had other people on here having conversations. I just want to know if you remember anything about the people that got signed that day <laughs> or any specifics that happened without yeah, me so to lead you to it. So that I wasn't going to go to that. I was actually uh, true. This is I was at that fitness factory gym. I know Danny Davis and, and Danny. They were so good to me, man. And I, I didn't. This was one of those things where I, I don't think I was putting in the work to, the, to warrant that. But there were a lot of issues, I think, with me getting released where people felt like I should have got released. And I and I and I'd always worked really hard. And I think I just I just had a down patch in my life a little bit with everything. But I, I'd I, I didn't have the confidence. And uh, I was at the gym, and Danny Davis had invited, invited me and told me he really wanted me to, to come to the trial. John Laurinaitis, who had hired me, was going to be there. And I think I was part of it was fear, and I didn't think I, I deserved it and wasn't ready. And Elijah Burke was at the fitness factory, and I, I was pretty down. And this was the night before, and at that point, I'd made my mind up I wasn't going. And Elijah was in there, and, and man, thank God. And he, he literally cut a promo on me and, and, and said, you need to fucking go to this. And Danny let you back and helping put you on TV and, you know, you owe it to him to go back and go get re-signed. You never should have been released. And, uh, and, and I, man, that night I went and just, I typed up, I wrote promos and had my, I had like three or four promos ready. I had that Terminator character that I understood at the time. And I just said, I'm going to go get fucking rehired. And, and I showed up and I remember that day, uh, my Chris Pavone, Kalen Croft got rehired, went on to be part of the dude busters with, with Trent Beretta. Uh, for for a, a little run up there and uh, Fletcher Chase, he ended up uh, Gavin Garrison. Uh, yeah. He had, we lived together for a period in FCW. He got resigned. 
that day. But I remember people were doing matches, and this probably in, worked out in my favor with, with, with where I was probably at mentally and everything. I just remember I got put in a, I think it was a four or four or five on five tag match towards the end. Um, and I don't think I did a lot. I did very little actually, which with this and, and, but on the promo portion, I remember I had my promo, I think on Batista and I, I had, I had multiple promos ready and I had, I always have a promo and I did this in WWE when we had to do promo class with Vince, I'd have set promos and then I'd have a set promo that could be interchangeable in case they give me something that I could keep that promo on no matter what yeah. and kind of just plug something in. And Wade Barrett used to give me shit. He goes, I catch on to what you're doing. Because <laughs> so, Vince will try to get you in front of everyone. But I always just, I, I really believe preparation is, is part of success with that. But I did the promo on, on, I did the whatever promo I did. And then John Laurinaitis, I did the, oh, I did the promo on John Laurinaitis about his brother, Road Warrior Animal, who used, used to have a Terminator gimmick. And I did, that was the promo I did first. And then John Laurinaitis called me out and he goes, do another promo on Batista right now. And I had the interchangeable promo in my head and I plugged in Batista and I go, oh, fuck, I might get rehired again. And uh, but I remember that and I remember us all being in line. And I remember the Basham brothers being there. And I'm like, man, what? I don't know if Eugene was there, too, that day. And then all everybody else and Brian Josie uh, got re-signed that day. Well, there was four of us. Uh, do you remember, do you remember his promo? Abraham Washington. I don't remember specifically, but he, he ended up cutting some, he was Dusty Rhodes, man. He was the promo guy at FCW for a year of cutting top promos in the class. It was unreal. What, what, but, and then yeah, everything a, happened. He, I was there that day. He had a, I don't know, a little bit of race in his promo. And then he talked about being on steroids and this is what yeah. the body you should want. It's a steroid body and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Everybody's like, what the hell is he talking about? And then it, he gets, and then he gets hired. It was awesome. It, I, I'll tell you, and it was, was, uh, with John and them, Lauren Idison, you know, they sometimes, and I understand the frustration of people with, with, but the, he, and he did a lot of hiring based off of, of a looks and, and, and potential of them learning in the system and, and, different things and in times it paid off huge and other times it, it, it created massive failures as well. But they, they he had a specific style uh, or, you know, things that he was looking for. And he did have some, some big hires over the years that ended up paying off and, you know, that, that were good, but you know, everyone has his things, but I understand the frustration and everybody, you know, working and putting in and, and sacrificing and, and then get overlooked. And it's uh, that's just the part of this business that, that it's like, like I get it, and it can bring out it brings out everybody animosity and jealousy, and, and and things don't make fucking sense, and it's. But I remember that day, and I, yeah, I remember I mean, like, seeing it, it's it, it was a, it was a big moment for me with everything. Yeah, like that day you got rehired, Cage got rehired, Abraham Washington was gone for like nine months, hadn't done anything, walked in that day and got hired. Yeah, really, yeah. the only one yeah. that had consistently been there for a while was was Gavin. Um, Garrison, yeah. you know, like, and he was even probably fairly new in the grand scheme. Yeah, he thing. was. Yeah, yeah. He, he hadn't been there very long. So, yeah, I mean, totally, what you say is is true. But that's, I mean, that's part of it. Rip always told us, like, what do you always say, like one percent, two, whatever the percent was, and it's not going to make sense. And I mean, Rip, yeah, it's it, it, laid out for us. It's it when, knows, when, it is, uh, when it, it's funny. It's like. It's, it ain't the Olymp it ain't the Olympic Games. Yeah. Uh you might be the last sprinter. You might have got ninth place, but you're chosen. Yeah. <laughs> I said talent has nothing to do with it. Somebody gets yeah. a whim, somebody likes something with pull, and uh whatever yep. it is, God bless you. You you lucked in there. Now when you get in there, work hard to get in there, and then when you yeah. get there, work even harder. You got it, and two, the thing it comes down to, and this is, you know, I was a fan my whole life and, and grew up loving it and watching it, and, and it, I think it's it's having Johnny and them, I'll say, and to my credit, you know, I worked very hard in, in everything I've always done, and when I was in Deep South and I did eight-hour days every day, they knew I was getting, like, I I, I, I never sat out, I never complained, I, I'd shown them that, that I respected it and loved it, and I, I, I think Johnny knew that there was some stuff that happened and I to this day, it, it, however, I got released and it, it caught me completely off guard. And, and I understand with Al and I love Al, like I have all the respect in the world. There was something in, and I look back and I go, I understand why it happened now, 
with it, but I kind of just hit it, hit a rough patch with things. And, and I think Johnny really always had a liking to me. And then we had a great relationship after that with different things, but I've always loved and respected it. And it's up to the talent. You gotta, you gotta really understand that opportunity. And Al even said in his book, he goes, and, you know, and he just said, he goes, the one guy that surpassed all expectations I had was Ryback and we're going on. And, and I don't think he, out of everyone thought I was going to go into the main event and go on to be able to be blessed to, could work with some of the guys I got to work with. And, and I feel that I backed it up and, and I, but I always respected it and stay humble. I don't know everything. And I shut my mouth and listened and learned and, and, and got put through the, the ringer a little bit. And, you know, but it's, it doesn't make sense with that. Yeah. And there's guys that, that should get opportunities that, that don't. And, and it's one of those things I don't really fully no, We're understand. not taking anything away from you. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not sitting here trying to say you shouldn't have got rehired. I, that's not. No, but I, I understand. All, it too, like, yeah. It, it, Hell, it definitely in, is, I remember you walking in that day and you said, getting rehired today, boys. Been reading the secret, getting rehired today. You told I, me, I, as soon as you walked in the building. I think that's one thing where people though, I, I've always been very confident in myself because in my things that I've done from an athletic background and I'm not afraid to be confident and it, it, it's helped me a lot in life. But I also understand that, that if people don't know me though, it could also piss people off because there's a fine line between being confident and arrogant. And but that's where I think it just in conversations and talking and I don't know, but it, it's, I remember that day very fondly because it was, it was a big turning point in my life with as far as, I don't, if I didn't show up to that, man, I don't know what would have happened as far oh, as shit. It, it was with Elijah and that. You and, sent Elijah Burke a check, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to gonna hit this it. chat real quick and then we can get at some new stuff. We can get into some of this new shit you got going on. Okay. Captain Keith, new member. That's awesome. Let's see. You got the uh, Kill City Cup. Got some new people in here. They want some stuff our way. Thank Big you. Al. Big Al Robinson in the house. We actually have a question for Rip today. I think this might be a new listener. It might be one of your your fans, but they have a question for Rip. So I'm going to, I'm going to let them actually ask, uh, uh, ask this question. And they, they threw a little super chat at us. So it says, is it true that you helped uh, train Jade Cargill? What was it like? What do you think of her interviews on her today? When you see her on AEW TV, you know, Jane Cargill right back. Yeah. 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 Jade Cargill or Jade. Yeah. Sorry. Jade. Yeah. Jade. First of all, she's one of the hottest women <laughs> you'd ever see in your life. She's jacked. She's Incredible. a real athlete, played basketball in college. She's got a work ethic like a nut. She's got something to prove. And then her, then her, her partner is Brandon Phillips, the old ex-major leaguer. She had money out the ass. She could do what she wanted to do. But she had this burning desire to do something on her own. And she was doing the work. And Mark Henry called me and said, hey, just got this girl, Jade Cargill, uh, I wanted to go see you for a weekend. So her and Brandon come up. She went to class. Uh, I had the outrunners, <laughs> Turbo and Floyd. Turbo and Floyd. <laughs> I had Randy just on her, on her, on her, on her, just working her like a guy, just training, just seeing what she could do. And and she never bitch. She never complained. She was fresh as a daisy when it was over. And, and that was it. That's she awesome. was, she was, uh, she was, you know, I treat all the girls like guys, you know, and then, uh, you think Tony Khan knows that? What's that? That you like kind of got her going there in the beginning. No, 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 no. She was already uh, a real athlete. She was already well, like wrestling. Jack. wrestling one. Well, she, but, but no, all I'm saying is I, I could teach her a whole lot of stuff that other guys don't even know about Yeah, of shortcuts to, uh, that wasn't my question. Well, anyway, <laughs> whatever. Tony Khan knows is what I would have. <laughs> I don't think Tony knows anything. <laughs> hey, let's let's get caught up to speed now. So, I try to follow you, all your stuff on Twitter, man. You got all kinds of stuff going on. It looks like you just got done with like a lawsuit. You've challenged Bill Goldberg. I saw some stuff on there with like uh, Booker T. I think I know yeah. you and like Punk had some heat. I mean, all kinds of stuff in in your world yeah, today. Yeah. You got the you got the feed me more nutrition line you can plug all your shit whenever you want you can do it later you can do it now how to get a hold of you how to follow you all that kind of stuff we got a lot of current stuff to get to i'm not real real great at this so you can which, which way do you want to go you want to go no, to the it, the uh no i appreciate I, I do have everything with feed me more nutrition on feedmemore.com i won't take up a bunch of time with that new customers you save 30 percent discount code ryback30 on there for everybody out there listening if you want to try it got all the merchandise i got a merch fulfillment center 
as well on there. We've got a lot of cool stuff, non-wrestling related, wrestling related. And then I do have new, I do want to talk about this real quick. I've got a new hot sauce coming out since I won my trademark, which is one of the reasons I wanted my name for, for branding things like this, where I don't have to do jack shit and the company contacts me and just wants to use my name and likeness and pay me a bunch of money to come out with a hot sauce. So we're doing a Ryback uh, Pepper Slam Chug Challenge, one of three coming out. This is the first one. This is about a level te- uh, five on a scale of one to ten on the heat scale. It's kind of like the Pocky One Chip Challenge. It'll be coming out in the next week or two here, and I'll be announcing that, uh, where people online, you, you do the chug, and you got to do like a 10-minute afterburn oh, with it. And so uh, the Ryback Pepper Slam Chug Challenge is coming out, and uh, I, I'm pumped over that. But other than that, feedmemore.com and, and everything in the Ryback Show on all podcast platforms and social media, Ryback TV on that. But, yeah, that, that's out of the way. And, you know, I, I challenge Goldberg. Me and Rip will get right on that uh, challenge, that that hot sauce challenge. We'll do that, <laughs> just, uh, we'll, we'll do that know, next it, week on the show. It's pretty intense. It, it's it, it's not. Uh, I use it sparingly as a hot sauce as well to build my tolerance up. But it's because I've so, done some. So hot that stuff was the trademark, though. That was that the whole deal with the WWE. Was it was it the uh, Ryback trademark, or was it the the Twitter account being suppressed? Was there more to yeah. it? Can you talk about it? Not talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So it was you know obviously in what I wanted to leave, and and this was. I was injured, and this was the big thing, why, why things really started falling apart. I was really hurt, and I tried multiple times. I, I talked to Hunter and, and, with, and the trainers and the doctors, and they were giving me Toradol every day for, for the last two years. And cortisone, they were giving me three times a year, which you're not supposed to get more than once. And it, the, the cortisone ate away all my cartilage, and they were giving it to me in my shoulder joint. So I started developing some real shoulder. My joint, I, all the cartilage is gone in my shoulder joint. So that was going on. My back, I was starting to get numbness in my leg, my, my disc, and that was from the ankle injury in Nexus when I broke my ankle. All our problems started with the ankle injury. And there was, just to kind of get people to understand, when I, I broke my ankle, they didn't think I was gonna be able to come back. And there was a botched surgery that, that the doctor performed that put two screws through my perineal and superficial nerve. WWE didn't have the trainers and the things, the system they have now wasn't, that's been like a process to get this as good as it was. They let the trainer at the time, this guy, Matt Smith, who was fired almost immediately after, pick a doctor in Tampa, Florida to save a little money not to send me to Birmingham. They didn't do a background check on the doctor. and He'd, he'd had 10 malpractice suits in five years for, for bad surgeries. He botched the entire thing. Okay. So I wake up from the surgery getting electrocuted, and like it was bad. I was on crutches and in a wheelchair for six months on just a broken bone that, that should have been fixed in a few, three, four months. So in that period of a year and a half, I was off of TV after the Nexus. They tried to fire me, and Johnny Laurinaitis called. And the day they fired Chris Masters and a couple other people, I was at the gym at St. Pete, St. Petersburg Gold's Gym. I stopped my workout. I see Johnny's calling. I go, fuck, because I saw they were firing people. I was the last one he was calling because he probably didn't want to make the call, and he literally fires me. And I, cu- I just go, I cut a 20-minute promo on him because there were a lot of mistakes that happened during this process that I, I was going out of my way to take care of. And, but people were trying to save their jobs and protect themselves. And I, I just go, if I, if I let him fire me, like I couldn't walk right still. I, it, was, it was a very intense situation. Yeah. And I just told Johnny, I go, one year from right now, I'm going to be the biggest fucking star on the television show. You're not firing me. You tell them they're not fucking firing me. I'm showing back up the next day, whatever. So this happens. This, they don't fire me. They realize that, that they can't fire me with it. They, they forget and send me the firing papers. The legal department didn't get notified in time, so the firing papers went out. I get the papers uh, a couple days later. I don't even hesitate. I call, what the fuck is this? Blah, 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 Johnny. No, 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 no. Throw that, rip that up, throw it away. Right then and there I go, oh, I have something pretty valuable right here. Went and got attorneys because I already knew it. Like, there was, there was, I go, they're going to try to get rid of me one way or the other with this because they thought I was damaged goods. And it's a business and it's fucked up, but a lot of mistakes were made on this and you know, it, it was what it was, but this is where the problems kind of started rearing their ugly head. So that happens. They then tried to put me back in developmental and they were going to let me rot in developmental after I'd already been on TV. And the plan was to bring me back to TV. Hunter was just now transitioning into to taking over developmental and getting a lot more involved to try to make this, the NXT to be a thing. Yeah. So Hunter kind of got caught into this. It was, Hunter was unaware of everything that had gone on and to his credit and was not had much more going on on the main roster. 
he he had told me something he go it, it really frustrated me along the way he goes well at some point we got to pull the plug on you with, with the ankle injury and he didn't know what was going on but it really sat wrong with me because i go fuck man i love this guy growing up and like i'm doing everything to try to get back and like some people made some really bad decisions along the way but i just go fuck i'm gonna have to like take control over this so like i i won i cut a very intense promo the next promo class on hunter in front of everybody oh my God. kind of like not and i was in no position to be doing so but i knew i had those firing papers on my side that they they, they illegally tried to fire me and johnny kind of blew that cover for them which was why i think he got demoted part of the reason too there were some things that went on with that for a while but then I call Hunter with it and I tell him, I go, You're, I'm going back to Vegas. I've been gone seven years. I'm moving home. And then I just told him and I said, I go, you guys are putting me on the road at some point. And I go, let me do live events. I'll fucking get this figured out. I couldn't walk properly still. I had permanent damage from the, from the surgery though. And so anyways, the doctors end up clearing me. I never should have got cleared. I get cleared because they don't know what else to do. Yep. They put me back on the fucking road. I move back to Vegas. They put me on the road. I'm wrestling. I do about five or six months of live events after being out of the ring for a year and a half with no practice, nothing. Nobody knew any different. I, all during that time, I watched tapes. I would like a football player or, or like boxer. I would freeze, do tape study. What will I do in that situation? I kept myself mentally sharp in that. And then I go, I will get the rest fucking figured out along the way. Nobody knew any different. Vince and them, finally, they debut me. Everything takes off. We start going, I was, I had a chip on my shoulder with everything. All this real anger started coming out with this. They're giving me non-contracted talent where I have free reign to creatively not get restricted, just go get over with it. So we start doing this, this stuff starts snowballing. Here's where the real issue started. <laughs> they put me, Cena gets hurt. He, it was supposed to be Cena Punk at Hell in the Cell. And the, the main storyline that year was going to be Cena and Rock at WrestleMania, which nobody knew about yet at the time. But that was the Roman Reigns storyline going on for Vince. That, that was So even though I had got red hot, Cena gets injured. Cena then suggests that they pull me and put me in his spot for the match with Punk. I just keep getting hotter and hotter, even though I'm playing a supporting role. But right when they put me in that, the, they, Jane Geddes, the head of talent relations at that time, they call me. I had a $5 million malpractice suit against the doctor that the, doc, the attorneys had been working on. Open and shut case. The doctor that fixed me on the final surgery was going to testify. WWE tells me, and they multiple times, they go off the record. They go, well, you're going to be fired if you don't drop this. We're going to get a lot of bad press out of this, even though we're not directly involved. We sent you there. We need you to, to drop this, this malpractice suit. We'll take care of you financially. Everything was great. I was red hot at the time. I, and I, they go, it'll be water under the bridge. There'll be no more issues with anything that happened in the past with any of this. And that's all that I wanted. And I go, just, I go, as long as you allow me to work for my money and we take care of everything, I go, I go, I'll do this. My attorneys begged me not to do it. Yep. I, and, but I, I was red hot and I was finally going to get to do what I wanted to do. But that was the beginning of the end of the games creatively with it, with everything. And, and it kind of just snowballed from there and it kept building and kept building and kept building dangle the carrot, dangle the carrot, dangle the carrot. Finally, my last year there, and that nerve injury from that ankle, that runs into your back, your, your L4 and L5, the perineal nerve. My, my discs were rapidly degenerating from the botched surgery, but they didn't want to look into it. And you just, it was, I was told never to talk to Vince about it. And, and that's one of the big things and why I still want to talk to him because I honored them, the people under him, because I would have got fired much sooner if I, if I would have betrayed them and tried to talk to Vince. Because me and Vince actually had a pretty good relationship and talked to him a lot over a lot of things yeah. on that. And, and so this is where people don't understand the kind of the, the legal bullshit that got, got wrapped up with all of this. And <clears throat> so anyways, <clears throat> I had the contract was coming up and, and they, re they wanted to renegotiate. They, they put the IC title on me, offered me a new contract. They conveniently do things also with the championships to, that people will go for <laughs> yeah. with it. And people don't under, this is why people don't understand that sometimes why things happen. And, and it was, that was, I was getting thrown a bone to re-sign it, and they wanted to try to sign me at a, at a pretty low rate for the things that I was bringing in and we, that we knew I was bringing in. And I, so I went to Vince. I went to Hunter first, then went to Vince. And, and Vince agreed to give me um, a multi-million dollar deal. We, we, he, championship run. We had some very nice things, but he wanted me to sign over the trademarks that I'd had previously oh. with Feed Me More and the big guy. And in the supplement stuff that I wanted to do, even though that was an entirely different class trademark-wise, 
they wanted to kind of get connected uh, on everything, but I was hurt. And then they, I kept telling Hunter, I go, I'm hurt. And I didn't want to take myself off the road though and look like a pussy. And I didn't want to get MRIs because you don't do that. You just keep, you're there working every week. A week turns into a month, turns into a year really quickly. Yeah. It turns into a lot of years. And so they, 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 I was frustrated because I felt like they just didn't give a fuck. And it's just kind of the thing. And you're just another body up there making money until you take yourself out of it. And finally, towards the end, um, when I wasn't signing the contract, Vince, and I was in the trunks and they were booking me really well again. It looked like we were going to go somewhere. I, I did the thing, break it, take it, like I was going to break the glass ceiling and go for the brass ring. And it looked like starting beating guys, doing the ground and pound. That would have paid off had I signed the contract, but as you know what happened, so I wasn't signing the contract, and so that championship run, that Vince a handshake agreement, then got put to me versus Kalisto for the U.S. championship. They de a demotion, but hey, sign the contract, and everything will get you back on track. I didn't sign the contract, so then that match got turned to, from being on the main card at WrestleMania to going on the pre-show. Still didn't sign the contract, which they would have switched it back to the show if I would have signed it. Wow. So then it went from that to then, well, you're putting Kalisto over in the pre-show. That's fine. I like Kalisto. He's a great guy. I have no problem losing to Kalisto. I, I lose to Kalisto. Vince Vince did not, like, again, he's like, so they, they keep that match going for one more pay-per-view. They keep it very limited on TV. They keep me still looking all right. They let me get a win on him on TV. Sign the contract. You'll go over. You're going to have a run with this. We'll get you back on track. Didn't sign the contract on the pre-show again put Kalisto over again. I show up to TV the next day. I was physically, I, I, I was getting towards the end. I was really, really bad, my back specifically with it. And, uh, and I just go, I'm looking up the side effects of Toradol. It's saying you're not supposed to be taking this stuff every day. I go, fuck, I'm taking 12 ibuprofen a day, four, three times a day. And I'm getting a Toradol shot five days a week, four or five days a week for years now, for two, the last two years specifically. And I just go, I have to get out of this environment. I just have to get, I don't know what it's going to, I just need to leave. I just, just, and so I get to TV and, and they were going to start embarrassing me on TV to try to run down value and to get me to sign the contract. And I already knew, I go, I just have to get out of here. I go into the office. Mark Carano was in there with Ric Flair and I go, just take me off the TV show. I'm going home. I go get my bags. And he comes in. You got to go talk to Vince, go talk to Vince. I go, I don't want to talk to him ever again. I'm done. I'm going home. We're done. And uh, I go home and they, from there, they then tried to stop my pay. And, and that, my whole career, I couldn't breathe through my nose and I had a ruptured eardrum from Deep South Wrestling my first year. I never got it fixed for them. I couldn't hear out of my left ear my whole, my whole WWE career, very limited hearing. And so they were gonna freeze my pay. I go, no, I'm gonna get my injuries fixed until my contract runs out. So they got, to their credit, they got my injuries fixed in my ear and nose with that. And then um, my contract runs out, the contract ends. And that's, but the games had started where they, when I, after that contract ended, they wanted uh, my social media accounts. They sent me a, a form to my attorney to, to give them all my social media accounts, not change my name, but give it to them with an NDA. As Vince is famous for doing the NDAs uh, with this. Uh, really? We said, yeah, we said no on it. And because it, it's illegal, I don't, I, they don't own the social media accounts. They could ask if you they should change the name. They can't have the accounts but they knew I was going to speak on the things that had happened and that I had enough of a following and people like me and they knew how popular I'd gotten and how much they had kind of fucked with that a little bit. And I think it was just their way of trying to control me, even though I was going to leave, as I say it, leave the walls of Shawshank. And they were like, well, we're going to fucking try to hold on to you any way we can until for whatever. So this is where the games really started. Once that happened with that, uh, my attorney suggested to go legally change my name to protect myself on my social media accounts because then I'm doing nothing wrong. Even if they go, Ryback's our intellectual property. Well, I'm Ryback Reeves. You can't do anything about that. Right. That's not the way that it works, unfortunately, or it shouldn't work. And what they did is they're partners with all these companies and they just had them essentially restrict and suppress all my accounts with everything to, which is illegal, which you go, well, why, if I was in violation of any trademark laws, you know, and eventually did win it with that. But if I was, what if the companies just deactivate my accounts? Why would they suppress me? What would be the point of that? And it, it was to hurt me, my brand, and to discredit me. And while they pushed out all these lies, they pushed out a lot of fake articles to try to really hurt my brand with everything. And my voice was severely limited then on, on the traction that I could get with it on top of everything that I had going on. And so How do they suppress is, them? Don't they have to work with – doesn't Twitter have to, like, agree with them or whatever? How can they just do it? 
well, they, they're in, Elon has already admitted this. They all the prior regime and that they had restrictive coding and all yeah. these different things. The tech, the shadow ban technology that previously all the companies denied. Elon came out and goes, no, it exists. And this is all public knowledge for people. And it was tied into the on the political side of things. They were using it to suppress people on the political end, whether they were far left or right, whatever the case may be. Yeah. I'm not political in any of that. But they're also they can use that technology. At, at their whim for any partners and, and the, the, the technology shouldn't exist. It's rooted in corruption with it. it there's no reason to suppress anyone if they're, especially if they're in vi no violation of any rules, which I've never been with this. So this is what has been going on in the game. And what the purpose of it is Vince is very famous for saying you're going to eat shit and like it with it. Well, the problem is that that's cool if you're in, in that world, but I left that world and he latched on. He's trying to prove a point to me that I can control you and I can, I can ruin your life. And I, it's almost as if he wants me to crawl back and to be, he, he loves it when people crawl back. He loves it when people have drug addictions and need him to go to rehab and then they can hire him at a lower rate. He likes to control everything. And this, and I know him well enough to say that and that where I, I don't feel bad saying that because it's the truth with it. So it's, it's a game that, that people don't understand that should not be going on, but I've had to fight in like I, my TikTok. I was making thousands of dollars a month on TikTok, getting hundreds of millions of views. They announced a partnership with them. Almost instantly, my account crashed. Wow. I can't get answers from any company. Hundreds of cases closed. Nobody will answer one question. What did I do wrong? Why am I not getting paid? What's going on? So this is why I'm being vocal about this for people to see. That's so. probably what happened to our YouTube show, Rip. They probably, that's why we only get hundreds of views, probably. I, but I, no, I'm not kidding you. People. I know you're not kidding. I no, was kidding. No but, no, but, no, but with you guys, I really believe Vince and them, though, they can control the narrative. He's one of the most powerful people in the world with this. People don't realize they, they are literally, they, and from working with their social media team, they have working relationships with all the companies. They have connections everywhere. And it, it's very, man, it's the one thing I underestimated when I left that I thought I was get, gaining control. And I have in many ways, but I go, fuck, man, this is, you know, and everything with my trademark, they reached out a year ago, just for people to know to when they found out they were going to lose everything. They reached out to settle with me and they go, we want to repair the relationship. We actually agreed on, on all the terms of everything. They agreed to leave the social media alone on everything on, on, on the settlement contract. The one thing they did not want to talk about or agree on or not even have a conversation was, was that $5 million malpractice suit they forced me to, to, to let go of with all the bullshit. And I even, I told Hunter, I go, we need to have a conversation. I don't care what happens. I don't care if I come back. I go, I want closure on this, and I want to talk to Vince about this personally. They desperately don't want that for whatever reason. So, so that didn't happen then? It hasn't happened. I still, to this day, I, I don't care if I work there ever again. I, have, I know what I'm going to go on and do. I've got my health back. I've been blessed. It always bothered me that I didn't have a conversation with him about it and what really happened. And I don't, and it, I, I don't know for sure if he, he's aware or not aware. That is, they're very good at covering things up there, the, the people under. And some people got let go on it. But it was it was one of the things that really bothered me because I trusted them, and I, I thought we were, and I did the right thing for the company and showed them that I was willing to be a good soldier. Yeah, I'll give up five million dollars of free money for me that I had permanent nerve damage on on this, and I'll go work for my money and I'll show you guys I'm worth it. And then they fucking stab me in the back when I go, fuck man, I, I can't let that one go with it. And it, so it's, I would like that for final closure. And Hunter knows and he's aware. And I had to do things with their attorneys on a deposition and. And then I even told the attorney, I go, look, and he got, he goes, Hunter got the message. And I go, well, we should all sit down and have a face to face and have one last conversation. I go, cause I don't want to talk about you guys anymore. I go, I want you just to let go of my social media. Let me go live my life. Let me say what I need to say. You say what you need to say. Look, I don't care if we work together ever again. Let me have this closure, you guys. And we can all, we can all let this go yeah. with it. But that ball's in their court and I'm still, nothing has happened with that since that's gone on. So. So you dropped the uh, the five million dollar deal that was yeah. like officially dropped and you can't you can't go back to that. No, then you statute but, limitations ran up. But then you wouldn't, and then and then you wouldn't resign. You wouldn't sign the contract because you wouldn't give up your your rights to your name. That was years later. That was at the end. Right. That was at, I'd signed another contract previously to that after. Right. And then and then on the yeah for the last one I, I turned out. And then when you end up leaving, you didn't, you, you kind of had a chance to talk to Vince at that time and you didn't take it. And then you, 
<clears throat> and that's the one that I told him I didn't want to leave and I walked out and that's where, but I, you know, and that was from having many conversations with him. And that was more just in frustration of, I knew I needed to get out of there. Vince is well known to, to, to you, you've heard a lot of people say he can, he can work you and get you to stay. I didn't, I, I knew I physically had to get out of there. I knew I, I just, and I, I didn't, I, when I left there, it wasn't with the intention of that I was going to quit for good or anything. It was, I just had to get out of that, that environment at the time and go get MRIs and, and see where I'm at with everything with it. And so I didn't, I thought that there would have been a conversation still because my had like six more months on my contract Yeah. and I, in which we did, we went back and forth still on, on that, but the, the, the conversation never happened. And it's one of the things that really bothers me to this day. Wow, man. So, so but, what, yeah. When, when Cena wanted you to replace him or whatever, what ended up happening with that? Did did you work that match or did you get injured for that match? No, I, I, Cena got hurt. And if you remember, he had like all that weird pink tape on his arm. This was, it was a, one of the Raws and I came out, this was when everything was really good with me. He came out and Punk tried to get out of the ring and Cena came out with one arm and threw Punk in the ring. And I clotheslined him and pick him up to hit the finish and they, he get, gets out of the ring. But that Cena had some sort of arm injury that happened. And just so people to understand, Cena was actually going to play a supporting role and put Punk over and for Punk to go on to work The Rock, to drop the title to The Rock, to then go on for Cena Rock, I believe. Is that, if I, I believe I did Cena have the championship on that. I can't remember what either way it was to set up for, for Rock Cena at WrestleMania, but it was for to get Punk more credibility going into Rock with it. Cena got hurt whether in for a very short period of time and he never missed any time. I, he suggested I get plugged in while I was red hot and undefeated with all that, but it's fine. And, but I got plugged into a supporting role, which is fine. I have no problem, but I think a lot of people thought, well, this has got to pay off at some point. And I think they had me lose seven pay-per-views in a row, row, row while I was red hot and I kept getting more over. And, and I don't think, it, I don't know if they expected that or not, but, and then they turned me heel to Cena and they took away my merchandise when I was a top seller with Cena. They literally, Vince, they took it all away. And that was tied into the, I mean, we're talking big checks. I mean, cut away completely. And that's where I felt really betrayed with everything on, on what was going on from that. I go, fuck, man, I, I shouldn't have trusted them on this. And, but you know, it, it, everything happens for a reason. And I've learned a lot of things. And I think too, I go, you know, I went to Vince and talked a lot with him about a lot of things. And I, a lot of guys were scared to talk to him. I never was. I had a good relationship with him. We talked about working out and supplements and not just wrestling and, and just life a little bit. And I go, fuck, I, I wish I would have not listened to them and, and kind of talked to him because it always bothered me. And, and just, and, but it's one of those things. And, and hopefully, you know, I, I just go, man, this guy's latched onto my life. And I think I've learned communication is really key. And, Maybe he's thinking something that I'm not looking at in a way, but I go either way. I go, you're legally suppressing my social media, right? Like, but so let's talk because I, I don't want this going on anymore. No good's coming from it. Right. So, was so. that was that the pay per view that Brad Maddox came in into play? Was he like the bad it referee? Was, yeah, or whatever? he low blowed me, and him and Punk covered me for the finish, and then I chased Punk up the cell. I closed the pay per view, which was a great, tremendous honor. And, and held the cell, shell shocked him on top of the cage, which was scary as shit. I bet. With after Mick Foley going through it, I go, I made we me and Punk were up there before the show with all the guys. We're like, is this fucking okay to to, to, to hit this? I'm damn near 300 pounds and all Punk's body weight, and they go, oh, you guys will be fine. It's it's secured, and I'm just thinking like, you guys fucking burn the Undertaker, like like anybody's fair game in this company, like so. And then I'm not kidding when I when I shell shocked Punk, the big crossbar, I made sure my my calf bone was was in front of that the one of the, the supporting bars so for whatever reason that cell busted through i could latch my legs around in a desperate attempt to maybe not kill myself while palm punk crashes to the floor just throw punk under the bus yeah Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Guys got heat on or he, he no, threw no, under the bus no. didn't he didn't he say a bunch of shit about yeah. it yeah it was we never had any issues really outside it was like the table the, everyone wants to talk about is the table bump is that I, I, we often, the, it was a weird, to this day, I don't know, it wasn't my idea, I can tell you that much. It, it was off of one of those little WWE stands, and, and they, for whatever reason, the Vince wanted the table to be long ways, and Gorilla Press him on a weird little table on this thing, and, and where, instead of long ways, but in, and it gave no thought to it, but they had padding on the ground. We literally did rehearsals. I watched them cut out the carpet and put the padding on the ground, 
And so, but the table spot, it, it, I'll be the first one to say, we didn't go perfectly through the table. We, we it, it went through the side of the table, but he landed on Patty. That bump was going to not be great no matter what, because it was just, those those bumps suck anyways, and landing on that shit through a table that way. Oh, sure. But, but Punk, it, nothing happened. With I've never gotten any trouble. I've never been talked to about my work once by anybody being dangerous or anything. Multiple people have came out and, and vouched for that, and Jericho and Moxley and Arn Anderson, different people. And, and so for whatever reason, the Punk has a big following, and, and we had some personal things that happened, and like with the Feed Me More taunt, he had, I guess, done that in ECW, but didn't get it over. And so I think there was some animosity and jealousy that I was doing it and it got over. And then they took, turned me heel and then he tried to start doing it on TV again and it wasn't getting over again. And he got really mad. And I remember I had a couple conversations and I had to go to him. I go, will you stop doing that? I go, I'm going to be going back to this. And he didn't like that. I can tell you that much. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I always tried to be respectful and I always, I never, but I, I, I and I'm not the only one. He can, he can have a bad attitude. And, and, and become off very cunty to say the least. And, yeah. and I like, I'm a grown man and I, I, I'll just tell you, I don't put up with it at all. And, and I, I made that pretty clear to him. I'll just say that. So he leaves and then, and I'm baby face and everything's going great. And, and then all of a sudden he does some podcast with Colt Cabana, who by the way, has come up and apologized to me for having anything to do with that. And he had no idea what was going to happen. And, with and they had a falling out too. So I mean, exactly. Yeah. And so, but, but Punk then takes that, that table bump and says, I dropped him on the concrete. So, and then he says that he does this, some backstage thing where, did you do that on purpose or are you dumb as fuck? One, if that would have ever happened, and I go, I'm dumb as fuck, he would have had that on the dirt sheets right away while he was in the company. It, that's why n- n- none of that ever happened. And I'm just like, what the fuck with this? And, and but I didn't realize the significance that, that was going to have, uh, but it turned a lot of people against me. And then, talking about being a dangerous worker and this and that i'll go there was no i never broke his ribs i worked him with broken ribs early on from a spear from roman reigns with that with the shield where i had stuff on my on my thing and it was going to be a tough bump and i had to work i worked the main events when they give me lidocaine in my ribs and i go he never had broke ribs i did but he, the, the wwe doctors vouched for this on that and i go it was just done it was it was done and everyone's human yeah, I think it was just done. We had personal things that had happened there, like where I told you, where I, I just didn't, I think he just thought he was going to sabotage me. And he did a lot of harm, I can tell you that much. But uh, look, we're all human. Everything happens. I have no doubt. Punk was really beat up when we worked each other. And I, I work, and I, as you know, you come in, and I was always taught, if you look like I look, you can't throw fluff. You got you to be able to, you got to know how to adjust to different guys. If I'm working Randy Orton, I know Randy likes it a little bit lighter as far and I know how to adjust and I've worked with them and I know that and so in punk I think it was just an unfortunate circumstance I was coming in from working locals and and working my way up the card of working very aggressive and got thrown into that spot where Vince wanted me to still work very aggressive and he liked that punk was really really beat up which we've known to be the case at various points and I I just think punk I'll give you an example it was on the European tour I was doing the road warrior just like kind of like a toss slam like the world's strongest slam, but I wasn't coming. Like a body slam, yeah. like a, a body bag slam from the world's strongest slam position. It's kind of a side bump. It, 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 it's an awkward bump, or it could be for guys with that. And I remember uh, I was doing that with Punk, and I think he, he'd had something going on. And early on, he came up to me very nicely. He just said, can you, can you maybe take that, that, that move out when we're out there? And I go, is it, is it hurting? He goes, yeah. I go, absolutely, no problem. We never did it ever again. I never did it to anybody else again. But I go, we had a better communication relationship when we worked. And we used to text here and there and, and then, but something changed along the way. And he had a lot of issues with the company and was very upset. And I can understand if there's a guy in the company too is using in a favorable way that can maybe work its way into the in feelings and, and whatnot. Yeah. And that's where I just learned. I go, man, communication is so important. Because I really believe if we talked and really just, if we just hashed it out, look, well, you know, the table bump wasn't perfect. But, but you also lied on it to make me look worse. It wasn't on concrete. So like, let's, let, let's cut the bullshit. Let's cut the, let like, you don't have to, like, people believe you, man. Like you have a yeah. big, he has a massive following. And I was like, the worst thing you could ever do in this business is say somebody's a dangerous worker with that. And like, you know, and, and that, but I've dealt with it and it doesn't bother me because I know the truth and I know enough people and they kept me, I worked with top guys from the beginning to the end. And they, they wanted, they wanted to have taken me from punk and let me work Cena and Jericho if I was dangerous. I promise you. I would have been sent to developmental early on. I, they wouldn't have let me kept going. I worked with the Shield all along the way. 
all the guys on it. Yeah. Kevin Owens, like you, you name them. I was with Seth Rollins all the time, all throughout my career. Ambrose all the time. Roman a lot, like with him. So I just go, if there were issues, those issues would have came out while I was there, not when I've been gone as well. So it's, yeah. but that's where I'm open to just conversations now because I think it's important. There's so much hate and negativity in this world and like, like people just need to talk and I'll listen to what you have to say listen to what I have to say, and let's see if, if things can't get worked out. Love it. Hey, did you not uh, beat up Rip's kayfabe son, Dylan Bostic, on like Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or something once? I did. I, he was, he, I think he was one of the local athletes, which those guys I have nothing but respect for. Those guys played a pivotal part, man, in, in me getting over. How did you feel about that, Rip? <clears throat> <laughs> Nobody got hurt and you got your money. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, I tell you, I, people used to joke with me there because I did those two on one matches for a lot, for, for many months. And I, so they would pick two guys. Those guys were essentially never had a TV match for the most part, the guys they would pick. So they could tend to be nervous sure. and they, they, they're, they're working me on that and I'm being aggressive and they, they don't know. And I can, I can come off as intimidating if they don't, if you don't know, you're just watching from TV. And so I would spend all day with the guys. I'd go eat with them in catering. I'd make sure that we, everything in the ring, I go, look, I'm not going to hurt you. I promise you. I go, I look very aggressive when I do things. I'm going to pull at the last second. It's not good. I'm not going to kill you. I go, but I go, I have to be aggressive, but I go, it'll be in a safe place. Just trust me. But the guys, people would joke in WWE that I was having their last meal in catering before I take them out to the slaughterhouse. And, <laughs> but it was me having a relationship and communicating with them sure. so that we had trust. Cause like, I got to pick those up. Those guys had to have the timing with me to pick them up at the same time. Yeah. With the, that could, if that, and I'm very early on, if that goes bad any point of time, like that's going to, that's going to bury me that, I, you know what I mean? On, on that, like that was a big reason why I got over. And that's why you will never hear me say a bad thing about those local athletes. Dylan, everyone, man, those guys played a massive role in allowing me an opportunity to get over. So thank you. <laughs> hey, it's better, than, <laughs> it's better than Gene Snitsky. He told me he was going to beat me up on live TV if I if I messed anything up. He, he, was, not, <laughs> he was not eating and catering with me. He said he was going to kick my ass in, uh, on live TV. So Well, uh, he, he's not going to be making money after that either if anything messes up. But so you don't want – I just wanted to – I wanted to build trust. I kind of went a different approach with that. <laughs> Yeah, I like I, I like that approach a little bit better. See, you hit, I'm gonna hit the. Um, you care if any if anybody does a like a super chat in the in the um, in the chat? Would you take That's any fine. questions if anybody does that? Yep. Whatever. Anybody you wants want. to do a super chat for right back, you can put it in the uh, the comments. Really, the last thing that I saw that happened currently that I wanted to ask you about, and, and really. That's why I was kind of surprised you were Stevie Ray. Didn't you have some kind of Twitter beef with uh, Booker T just recently, trying to go on his show, and then yeah. he said no, and I saw some screenshots back and forth about being on live or not live. Yeah. That all that, fell apart, I guess? Or So, I, it, that again, this is where this has kind of opened my eyes to everything going on. I actually got a couple messages from people in WWE right around the time, the right before the Booker stuff, asking me if I was getting cleared. And then all of a sudden, Booker, who – I, we never had, had we, there was one other issue and I'll talk about, it. I talked about it on Stevie Ray's show and I'll just start off with this. It, the Booker stuff, we, he always commentated early on in my matches. We got along great. I have nothing but respect. I was a huge fan of Harlem Heat. Stevie, I've always had seen him I've talked. I've done his show. He's done my show over the years. And, and you know, um, he was the first one to reach out when everything literally called me. We talked for 90 minutes. I have all the respect in the, in the world to, to both of them, man. And, and so, but I made comments about Vince McMahon's mother about a year and a half, two years ago, about, about a year and a half ago, maybe, maybe a little over, um, that, that I don't think a lot of people understood. And I've apologized. I've met her. She was a sweet woman. I want people to understand what was going on with this is they had reached out, as I mentioned earlier, to, to, set, to settle on the, uh, the, the trademark dispute. And it, I had to end up spending a lot of money on this over the years to, to get this back a lot. And, and they, Vince and them had started dragging their feet and their attorneys had reached out. And they, they'd asked, please stop talking about Vince on Twitter, which is why I've always talked about him on Twitter is because I knew it bothered Vince. And then that was my way. I can't compete with him financially, but I go, oh, it's kind of cool that I know it's fucking pissing you off and you're fucking with my social media and it's a big game. Let's play the game. You're trying to run me dry. I have some safety nets in place. I'm going to get my health back and then we'll fucking play the game. So this is kind of what is going on for people to understand. They had reached out to settle and delayed things so bad 
they, they, this went on, kept going on and going on. We, we'd come back to the settlement. They didn't wouldn't want to talk about the monetary, the, the malpractice suit. Vince and them would delay another two, three months. I had had enough because I'm just spending money with this. And I go, fuck you. You're going to keep on trying to hurt me financially. I'm going to hurt you emotionally. And just so, and now that this doesn't make it right. And I knew when I did it, I knew I was going to be crossing a line that you probably shouldn't cross. And I take care of my mother. I had her here for nine years. And I, and I, I, I sympathize and, and we're all going to, you know, lose our mothers at some point. And it, it, it's like, you, you don't go there, right? I didn't know any other way to hurt him other than I knew he loved his mother dearly. And I go, and I put out the comment about a situation that I'd heard through that I knew was true and, and, and called her, you know, a word I'm not even going to repeat. But I knew that that was going to hurt Vince, and, and, and I did that. And I've since, and I've apologized for doing it, but I knew that I had to let it go because that was, that I had to send a message that I'm not going to fucking, I'm not in your walls anymore, and what you're doing isn't right, and I'll, I'm not afraid to fire back at you. Like, I'll go till death. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I, this, is, this is what the game you want to play. Let, let's play with it. But it wasn't right, but it was a very heated moment of, of things that just was sick and tired of it. And I put that out, and... and Got a lot, of, a lot of hate and criticism, and I realized I upset a lot of my followers. I go, fuck. I, I go, I knew I was going to piss people off, possibly. I go, I had to send that message one way or the other. And I knew publicly was the way that he did not like, and it embarrassed him. And, and, and I did it. And, and St- uh, Booker, on his podcast, it, I guess, came out a week or two later and just said, man, I don't respect Ryback anymore. And if I see him, I won't shake his hand. And, and I didn't say anything about it. Because uh, I Stevie, I always got along with Stevie Ray, and, and I go, I don't want to kind of get into it with him, and, and, and make anything public, and and I go, but I wish he would have just called me and asked what was going on, or just said, look, I don't agree with what Ryback said, but I don't know what's going on with him and Vince, and it's an unfortunate situation, and I just wish he would have not maybe like kind of gone in, a, but he did, and and it, it was it was what it was, but that had, that was over. I apologize for it down the road. And then out of the blue, I get tweets from them or messages from people. Are you getting cleared? Are you getting cleared? And then Booker comes out and says, Ryback talks like he's been in the business for a hundred years, which by the way, nobody has been, but has been 19. And, and I don't know everything, but I don't know where it came from. I didn't, I don't know what he was referring to because I, we tend to agree on a lot of things I've heard him talk about with things. And, and I, I just go, where's that coming from? And then he goes, AEW shouldn't hire Ryback. He does. And I go, what the fuck is going on? With this, why would you just randomly out of the blue? I get messages from WWE. Are you getting cleared with that? And then Booker comes out and says that he, he gets paid by WWE, you know, through NXT. And I just go, what the fuck? But so that happens. And then Stevie calls me, invites me on the show. And but right prior to that, I should say Booker. I I I, I have to acknowledge as I go. I can't let this happen anymore. I'm getting my health back. I'm coming back. I can't sit on this one. I have to now. Let's have a conversation and then talk about what's going on. Because I think I can explain things and not that he's going to agree with me on everything, but I go like this, just let's just have a conversation live. And, and he goes, anytime, come on my show live. And he put live in big letters on it. And I go, I took it up. I was getting ready to hop in the shower. I go, absolutely. My only demand is that it's live so it can't be edited. And then I get to take a shower. I come out and I see he has this tweet that, where he's rescinding my, the invitation because I'm making dem- ridiculous demands to come on his show and this, and I go, no, my demand was just reiterating what you said to do it live right. so we can, we can talk and, and air things out. And I'm not going to yell or we're going to just let's talk. But WWE, and I, I have this on good enough. Uh, well, the word that I've heard is, is that, you know, that they got a hold and, and don't, we don't want him talking about everything that I'm talking about on, on a, a platform that he works for WWE. Is he still in? W- he's NXT right now. I don't even he's know. He's a commentator. Yeah. He, and he, oh, he gets good. I can't believe they would, he would even ever thought you could come on his show. Then. Yeah. And, but, and, and I don't know, but he doesn't know everything going on. Like I've talked yeah. about, and most guys don't, but uh, everyone's the same. Everyone sees the dirt sheets. And I yeah. think it, it, I go, Man, this is where I me and Stevie are on the same page. I go, and, and like, man, if there's ever any issues, like we work together over there, just call me before you're gonna go out and like if you're gonna if you don't call me and at least hear my side of it before you go talk about it, before if you're gonna take personal shots at me or like to, but to say like AEW don't hire this guy, if I'm all these things that they, they put out and want people to believe, wouldn't you want me to go there and fuck that place up if I'm such a <laughs> horrible person? Why it's so obvious what they're doing. It would just merit, it helps my case even more, I feel, with it. But I just go, man, it's a distraction. I just got to get healthy, get cleared. And, and it just, and you, know, and you know what? Fuck. If, if nobody goes, man, this guy, we're not going to give him an opportunity, blah, blah, blah. 
I'll be fine. I get independent bookings all the time. I'll put it on my Ryback TV. I'll make more money than ever. I'll do what I love. I've got my business. I'm fine. Like with it. And I go, everyone's going to see the truth is going to win eventually on it. But I just go, it's pretty obvious when you, you go, why would you say AEW don't hire this guy and nobody else? Like, it's okay. So, but yeah. that's it, it, I, Stevie, we talked all about it yesterday and I let, I'll let people decide, uh, you know, and, but it, it is what it is. And yeah, I, I just thought that was pretty wild. Them. I saw, you know, I saw the tweets about Booker T with you and him back and forth. And then all of a sudden I look and you're on Stevie Ray show. I was like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aren't they, are they brothers? <laughs> no, they are. But that's, I think that, that kind of, and I'm not, Stevie's very fair and just listens. Stevie doesn't get invested. He's a man, that guy, he's as real as it gets. He literally, and that, that's why I respect him because he, he's a man. He actually picks up the phone and calls, you know, that's like Kevin Nash. I have all the respect in the world. Kevin Nash will pick up the phone and call you or text you. And, you know, and, and I, Austin, same way. I did Austin's show. We talked for a week, called me every day for a week and just shot the shit. And, like, I just like, man, there's such a difference between guys that, like, that are grown men and how they act and then, like, childish, petty bullshit games and with other people they can act. I'm like, and I'm like, well, I'm at the age and I've learned. I go, I'm just going to – I'm I've dealt with a lot of hate over the last seven years. And I know it's not true on it or, or not at least in – the to the degree that it's been told. And I go, I'm just going to have conversations with people and let people decide. Cause I've seen so many made up lies and people just reacting in a hateful way. I, I, I see the worst things every day when I open up social media, I do, I get a lot of love too, but I mean, I see some pretty yeah. bad things, but I don't let it, I know the truth. And I, I just know, do the work one day at a time. The truth always wins. Cream always rises to the top. And, and hell, it, it's taken seven years to get my health back and to get everything, but you know, it, it's happened. And then I'm going to, I'm coming back regardless. So it's just, I think I'm just more mature too. I go, let's just conversate. And I'm trying to talk to fans and let people over the talking points, like what are your issues? And, and I'll, I'll explain to, to the best of my ability. Yeah. I mean, um, we don't do a lot of our interviews on here live. We've had a few and we've done a bunch of taped interviews, but you being the guest today, got our first commenter banned. I just threw the first person out of the <laughs> chat that I've ever had to do. So right back, comes on. I banned yes. the first person ever, Rip. What do you think of that? Oh. Chad. Chad was banned and comments were removed. You see that? Yeah, what did he say? I don't know. Just something being stupid. a dick, yeah. First yeah, time. Yeah, I'm sure it, was, it had to do with me. I get it. On my show, it's constant. So, But that's, you know, that's the thing I've learned. I go, and the Booker thing really inspired this. So I thank him with that. When, when, he, when he rescinded that conversation and took that back, I just go, I'm going to, like, I've been wanting to do the format I'm doing with my show now, taking in guests. I couldn't get callers to call in now with Twitter spaces. I get live people on my Twitter coming in where it's like a talk show. Oh, you and where they, yeah, it, it's changed everything. Numbers are going back up. Like, this is what I've been wanting to do for the last three years. Talk about wrestling, health and fitness supplements, whatever it is. But people can actually hear real people that love and support that, like, that I see when I go out to places every day. I go to the gym. I sometimes take 15, 20 photos in a gym of kids that were in high school or little kids growing up watching me that are now in high school. And like, and like I go, man, there's like real love out there, but the social media, I'm just seeing that all this hate. And, and I go, I go, I know it exists. I go, I know what's going on with the suppression. I go, I'm just going to keep fighting this and, and keep speaking my truth. And I really think everything's going to work out. And all of this I've learned, just start having communication with people. You maybe be more proactive on it. Whereas if somebody says something fucked up, Rather than blocking and not talking, maybe saying, okay, let's have a conversation about that. And you can't do it with everybody, but with select people, you can. So, what do you think, Grip? You got any, you got any comments or questions for the I'm big just, ride back on here? I'm, today? Just, I'm just listening to the big man because he wanted something to just get it out. So now he's getting it out and he's feeling better. And I'm just sitting right. here, uh, just soaking it all in because. Uh, I'm not, I haven't walked a mile in his shoes. I haven't walked a step in his shoes. So the stuff he's going through, we've all got shit. We all love pro wrestling. Uh, some of us make it. Some of us don't. Some of us work our ass off. Some of them it gets handed to. And, but this is the business we chose to be in. Yeah. And it's sort of like a wife thing. <laughs> you take the good with the bad with it or, or, or whatever. And I'm just sitting here listening, trying to listen the whole times and, you know, maybe pick my boogers and pick my scabs off. My nose and, shit. <laughs> and I got nothing else to do. And I can't hardly see that anyway. So I'm just listening and enjoying the conversation. 
Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I really genuinely hope, though, with everything, this can all come together. And I, I would love to be able to, to work this out to where I can get all the, my trainers together and do a nice little documentary and, and have you included in that and, and get the training that I never got to get when I was down there for that year, year and a half. So. Hey, you know, if this happens, Rip's going to need a, need an assistant there. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can get involved. You can come in and He's we'll get some good footage. Caretaker, a filmer. Get, yeah, I'll take some bumps for you, Vaughn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> might wipe your ass something. I mean, <laughs> thank you guys again and Rip and everything that you've done. And, and man, you, 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 played a, a very big part in, in the business and, and giving back. And it, it's, it's inspiring because it's motivating to just to, to want to go back. And, you know, I don't give a fuck about wins and losses, anything like that, but like there, there's an art to this and the psychology that was put in place. That's very important that I think can get lost at times. And in today, and there's a lot of things going on and it's very important. The only way that the, that stuff is held intact is if it's passed down. And, and, and I just thank you for everything you've done. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, what the hell, right? <laughs> you love wrestling. I love wrestling. And we're just trying to yep. live our dreams. And we're still we're still little kids in the candy store. Absolutely. That's what it is. Rip's never going to put it over, man. No. I, just, I just did. <laughs> hey, no. Good luck on the comeback, dude. I think it'll be Thank awesome. You. We're going to be cheering for you and, and, and the Goldberg match to happen. We're going to plug it every day. We're going to tell Tony Khan he needs to make it happen. <laughs> I've been trying to Thank get Tony Khan to buy Rip's book for about 16 straight months. I even offered Tony this for half price. He still hasn't taken me up on it. He don't have enough money. But, he didn't have enough money. <laughs> but I tell you what, if there's anybody that can make Ryback versus Goldberg happen, it's right here at the uh, the Rip Rogers show. It don't get any better. Than don't get any show. better than that. We're going to end this thing with a head bob. Everybody's got to go out with a head bob. This group is named Starcade. They got some of the greatest wrestling rap videos you've ever seen. I'll send you the link to their YouTube. Doesn't get any better than that. And I just happen to be in one of their videos, too. So I got to make sure I put them over. I just want to see the hot women. Well, we're not going to see the video. We'll just play. <laughs> Surely Ryback will get the Starcade head bob. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Don't get Have no better than that. Me. And a billfold so swole that I can't get the big gold and a billfold so swole that i can't get the shit closed so i money fold and rubber band wrap and when it pops